Alright, as promised guys, I'm going to show you um, the next step into actually having multiple JFAX, but the player actually only sees it as one. It's not really complicated, but there's a few steps. As you can see, this is the mission. Everything's hidden. Let me go ahead and unhide some things for you. And we can sit here and come down here. And we will need to unhide that, unhide that, unhide that. Go ahead and unhide, actually. Let's see here. Unhide Firefly. And these are all of our uh, trigger circles. We'll go ahead and unhide some of these. Actually, we're just going to show all just to make it easy. So, here again, we're looking at the basic mission. This is our attacking force. Doesn't spawn in until the player actually hits this activation, uh, this trigger area here. At which point, again, they're given the UTM coordinates for those who haven't seen the other video, which basically gives them directions to come right around here. As soon as these vehicles spawn in, they start moving along this road down to attack a battalion of tanks. Right now, this JFAC is set up with all the necessary settings to tell the player to attack this one. Now let's say you wanted to have the JFAC also tell them to attack this vehicle as well as this vehicle. There's actually two ways you can do it. Um, the first way is actually creating your own custom group which you can actually do um, in adding a template um, and you can actually again create your own custom group inside of here. It's a little more complicated. I won't talk about that in this tutorial. We'll uh, go into that in another tutorial. This one we'll talk about having multiple JFACs telling them to attack each of these targets but again the player thinks it's only one. So the first thing we're going to do is actually spawn in another JFAC. So here we have you know this USA Firefly yada yada same name. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this one Firefly 2 because you can't have units with the same name so keep that in mind. And I'm going to spawn them right beside them. And let me actually delete that waypoint that I just assigned. You want to be careful about that because it defaults to add. As soon as you add a unit, it defaults to add for waypoints. Now that that one's spawned in, or is going to be spawned in, I need to set its actual spawn time to basically 24 hours later. The reason why is you don't want the vehicle to actually spawn in until it's time. I'm now going to click advance and click add. Again, we're going to perform a few different things we need to go to perform command first set the call sign we're actually going to name them the same thing firefly one now we're going to down to add set a frequency same thing i think it was thirty and it was on fm if i'm not mistaken uh... let me double check and yes firefly one the frequency thirty now again i'm going to set this one up to uh, invisible i'm also going to set it up to Immortal. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still getting over a cold. I apologize for that, folks. Now I need to set it up to actually perform a task. Again, we're going to do FAC attack group, what I selected here. Again, we're not going to worry about the condition start and condition stop in this time. That's a little more complex. We'll do that in another tutorial sometime. Uh, now, again, you have the option you can select the group from this drop down menu or you can manually click on it. I'm going to manually click on it so it knows it's doing attacking force one. So that guy's at least set up for now. Um, we'll get into a few mo more things, so don't worry. I'm not going to do too much. I'm going to make sure all my facts are spawned in before I start uh, assigning triggers to actually spawn them in. Uh, let me create a whole nother one. We're going to name this one Firefly 3. Again, he's going to spawn in and set him for a day later. Go ahead and click Advanced. I'm going to click add, same exact thing, perform command, set the call sign, go down to Firefly 1, click add, perform command. Again, we're going to set frequency. It was 30 on FM. Click add, and this one again, invisible, as well as we're going to set it to immortal so they can't accidentally die. 
Now we're going to perform task. If I click the right button, attack the group, and we're going to assign him to this one. Because remember, they're going to be assigned each different target. So all of my facts have been assigned. This one, this one, and this one. Or at least they've all been assigned a target. Now what we have to do, since we know that fi this firefly, or this one here, is going to be the first one to spawn in, Ideally, what we want to do is have this guy, as soon as his targets are destroyed, this one basically despawns or deactivates. The next one activates, and as soon as his target's destroyed, he deactivates, and the next one activates. And it's very simple how to do that. Let's go up to our triggers. All right. Now, you see this one is one that actually activates the original Firefly. What I'm going to do is create a new mission, but I'm actually going to move it up a little bit. And it's going to be once. Uh, there's different reasons for why you have things appear once versus mission start versus something else. I'll save that for another tutorial. If enough people request information on it, I'll go into more detail on it. But I'm going to call this Firefly 2, just so it's an easy naming scheme, so I know exactly what it is. Now what I'm going to actually tell it to do, if group dead, and I'm going to say attacking force 2. Again, the reason why is this is attacking force 2. This is the first JFAC that spawns in, and as soon as his is dead, I want him to despawn, this guy to spawn in. There's different ways to do that. I'm going to show you this way. It works the best way. We're going to say group deactivate, and that is going to be Firefly 1. So as soon as attacking force 2 is dead, that guy despawns. Now we're going to add a new one. Group activate. And this is going to be Firefly 3 because this was the one we selected as Firefly 3 so remember what you named him. So now that guy's activated. Now he has options. His options are in the radio menu for the player to interact with. They're all named Firefly or at least Firefly 1 to the player. They all have the same radio. As, soon, as, long as, as far as the player knows it's the same exact JTAC or JFAC. So now I'm going to create a new one. This is going to be Firefly 3. Hopefully you guessed that. And actually I should rename those. This should be Firefly 2. The other one should be Firefly 3. I'm just keep my naming schemes correct. And you do, I do highly recommend that because it can be very easily confusing, especially when you have a huge list of triggers going on. It's very easy to get confusing. So we're going to say Group Dead. Now we need to assign it to... Let's see. And I'm already getting confused. So you can kind of see how that happens. Alright, so we need to do it when Firefly 3 is dead, Firefly 2 spawns in. And... Or I should say, yeah, when his group is dead. Uh, group dead. And we're going to say Attacking Force 3 because this is Attacking Force 3. We're now going to say Group Deactivate, which is then going to be Firefly 3, a new tasking, which is going to be group activate, Firefly 2. Let me make sure this one is correct. Yes, I did put that one incorrectly. So now, again, the way this scenario goes, this guy is spawned when the player hits the right trigger. He then tells the player to attack these guys, because these guys are going to be the biggest threat for the mission, at least against the other tanks. And if a player stays above a certain altitude, these are no threat to the player himself either. As soon as the player's destroyed all five of these tanks, then JFAC 3 spawns in. And he then says, okay, I basically have a um, Shulka for you. You need to attack this one. And all the weapon selection was on auto. You can manually select it if you want, entirely up to what you want to do. As soon as his target's destroyed, then, if I can click on it, Firefly 2 spawns in. And the same thing. Now, again, in the player's menu, it's Firefly 1 every time. Every time he checks in, it's Firefly 1. So as far as the player is concerned, it's the exact same JFAC. They don't know any better. They will only see one JFAC on the map at a time. They can only communicate with one at a time. So that is how you can have multiple JFACs assigning targets to multiple groups without the player knowing there's multiple JFACs. Now, a keen player will kind of pick up on that and we'll kind of know what's going on, most people won't be any smarter. 
Uh, again, the only other way you can do it is actually create your own custom group. And if you assign the JFAC that group, he'll guide the player in on each of the targets, regardless of what it's made up of. Made up of. But I'll save that for another mission. But that is it so far. Make sure you hit save. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know if there's any other tutorials you want to see happen. And also don't forget to hide all the stuff from the player so they don't have an idea of what's going on. You guys have a wonderful night, and we'll talk to you later.